my channel. In this video, we're going to talk about how to make a seamless repeating pattern uh, out of this um, base pattern that we have here. In case um, you haven't watched my uh, previous video, which talks about how I created this pattern, just click on the link here uh, so that it'll take you to that video. In the previous versions of Illustrator, it was um, really hard to make seamless patterns not impossible but definitely a little harder because uh, we have to use the create mask function to do that and uh, sometimes the seams were not seamless if you uh, observed it in like you know under a microscope so uh, but um, that problem is really solved when illustrator introduced the uh, pattern maker tool so let's get started all you have to do is once you have your pattern, it could be this or it could just be a circle or a square or any drawing, uh, it doesn't matter. Just select whatever you want to be included in your pattern. So I'm just going to delete this one. Okay, so I'm just going to uh, select a selection tool that is I just pressed V on my keyboard. I'm going to click and drag to select everything because I want to try and put everything in my pattern. Next, I go to object pattern make it says that the new pattern has been added to the swatches table over here so you just click OK the blue box that you see right here this tells us which is our base pattern and everything around is a demo to show you how it looks like when it's repeated under these settings so let's go through each one of these and um, adjust it so that we have the pattern that we need so the first thing let me just rename this as cool grid and then the first option is grid so here we have few options here and then there's a tiny picture which says uh, exactly how it gets arranged right now we are in grid and uh, as you can see it's not quite uh, seamless when we go to height and width this changes the height and width of our box right here and this one is the it says it's link and this means it's off that means when we change the weight i mean the width uh, the height automatically changes so if you want you can make it as less than it like make it five and then uh, everything changes and it kind of overlaps i generally don't do this unless i know exactly what the measurements of my artwork are so i'm just gonna go back to what it was and show you manually how you can adjust so that you can get the perfect seamless pattern there are many options here like move tile with art or size tile to art one more thing the base pattern i made sure that i didn't group the elements together because if i did that i'll have to ungroup them again in order to move anything like for example if i wanted to move this like this then what happens is um, i wouldn't be able to move it because it would have been grouped and i'd have to ungroup it but now uh, that i haven't i have them all ungrouped i can easily move them around without having much trouble if i really want to uh, in this pattern we don't really need to do that but if you have something like a pattern which calls for something like this where you want to move the flowers around or the leaves around and then it will be much helpful coming back to this okay uh, now we have this moon tile with that uh, your tile is nothing but this uh, blue box that you see right here which determines everything like you know you move it you resize it and stuff like that so when you say move tile with art uh, if you happen to move the art to any uh, for example I mean, I've selected my art over here and if I move this so the tile kind of follows me but if I uncheck this and try to move it it doesn't so this becomes your center tile so all your pattern is based on what's in this box so what happens is you kind of get out Beard set over there. I would always select move tile with that because I find that much more comfortable. But it also depends on your artwork, how you want to do it. It definitely uh, is something which you need to decide depending on what you have in, as your base pattern. So I'm just going to undo that and go back to my original image. Okay, the overlap is something like when your pattern kind of overlaps another item. I'm going to select everything and go make a pattern out of this. 
Okay, so you have a pattern right here, and then you have the overlap. What I'm going to do is I'm going to decrease this so that I, I'm going to tell you what I'm doing right here later. Okay, so now we have an overlap. So when I say this is clicked, that's the top layer is on the bottom layer of the from the right side. So I'm just going to click this. This doesn't make much of a difference because we don't have a left to right overlap. But this one uh, here it says top in front, so I'm just going to change that and. This is how it's going to change. So overlap is something which you use basically have such kind of a pattern. So um, right here, there's no overlap as whatsoever. But let's see once we resize this. So copies is just the copies of the uh, demo or the you know, what you see around. So you can change this to probably five into five, and they're going to increase. But three into three is more than enough, unless you have a specific reason you want to. So dim copies to uh, so. You can actually dim the copies around your base tile. This is what happens. But I like to see the pattern as it is, like how it will look on paper or something. So these are just this section over here is just for the um, demo that you see around. So it doesn't really matter what you choose over there. Um, so okay, coming back to this. The most important thing, how do I fix this? We have a little tiny button over here which says that we can resize. So all I have to do is click on it and then you can see these tiny little boxes pop up. So after this, you can reduce this. So I'm just going to reduce this. So you can see it's getting overlapped, right? So I'm going to adjust it so that it coincides exactly with my other hexagon. Okay, there you go. That's exactly how it should be. And over here, it seems to be fine, except for the fact that there's a little bit of overlap here. And on the right side, let me readjust it. Yeah, that seems fine as well. So everything seems fine, except for this tiny level boss over here. So what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to uncheck this. I'm going to hit, select these four bars, and then reduce them. So this is what I was, I was talking about, having your uh, ungrouped images so that you can actually move and resize them however you want. Uh, now we have a grid a pattern ready. Uh, this is how it looks like. And then we're going to save this. Uh, we have cool grid. I'm going to save a copy. You can still keep it as a cool grid. I don't know why it keeps asking again. Now the next one. Let's try something else like brick by row. This is how a brick by row looks like. And then you have a brick offset, so you can select how you want them arranged. Like this is, you know, okay, doesn't look good. I think there was more. Okay, this was better. And now, if you want to save this as well, so all you have to do is go to save a copy and save it again. So let's check the brick by column. So as you can see now, it's in a column. So hex by column. Uh, this is one of my favorites by far because a lot of my patterns usually which are not um, not consists of geometric shapes, but usually flowers or things like that. They look really good uh, in hex mode. So. I usually prefer hex by row depending on what it is. Oh, <laughs> this is totally messed up. Let's try to fix this. So you can always adjust it like you want. And then you can hit on save a copy. And once you're done with everything, you can click on done. And then you have your swatches right here. So all you have to do is, doesn't matter which shape, just take it. And then click on pattern. And there's one thing that you need to remember. These patterns are, for example, this one. It's on white background, so you see that. I usually make sure that I don't put a background when I'm creating a pattern because, because then it's a little hard to change the background. Of course you can uh, with your Photoshop and stuff, but it's let's say I don't like it so much. So for example here, this was the pattern that I used to create this pattern and this one. And you can clearly see that I've changed the background here, but uh, because this was like basically just the elements. If we move it here, you can see that it was just the elements. I would highly suggest you do that because if you want to create a paper or a fabric with something like a different background, it's much easier if you have a, you know, 
transparent background. So coming back to our uh, hexagon, so I've I've got transparent background here as well, so that's why you see it like this. So what I do usually do is, if I want to put a background to this, uh, once I've created my box or a circle or anything, I just control C, that's copy, control F, that's paste on top, and then I select the whatever background that I want, for example, if I want it white. Then I send it to the back of the artwork, I do shift, command, and open bracket, or you can also do right click, arrange center back so now you have your uh, nice little white background right here and um, I can show you in some different color let's try that it's just for fun okay um, no, let's make it blue so that it's very evident okay let's send this to back okay so now you can see how this looks like so after all that I just group collect I mean I just select everything and right click and then see group or you can also press command G or control G on your PC so now this is what you have and all you have to do is export this I generally prefer a completely different method to export my patterns what I usually do is I take up a new file and um, like I will know exactly um, you know i want this one to be like 21 inches by 21 inches like normal um, pattern paper hit create and then what I do you can see this you cannot see these patterns here and you could go ahead and check in your library and stuff but what I usually do is I just copy whatever I've created right here you could copy this or you could even copy and I'll go and paste in my new file and after I do that I can see the pattern here and then I just hit delete so now I have the pattern I have a blank canvas I can choose whatever I want to do so I go ahead and draw my beautiful rectangle with a beautiful blue tint remember this is a pattern without a background even though we copied the one with the background so I'm going to control C, control F so that it pastes on top. Check my pattern. Now, since everything is here, I'm going to say file, export, export as. And now I'm going to save it as a PNG. Make sure you save it as a PNG. And you can say use artboard. If you're not sure, you have to run the right amount of a box. Say export. You can select whatever resolution you want. Let's put it at 150 right now and click background transparent. Okay. And so this is how your pattern looks like. There's one thing which I forgot to cover and that's the size of the pattern. So as you can see, this is like probably really small in certain objects and you want to make it bigger. Um, that's pretty simple. Uh, so you just go back to your pattern maker tool over here. So I'm just going to copy this and click option, click and drag so that I have a copy. Now I'm going to hold shift and resize this. So all I have to do is go to object, pattern, make. Okay. And as usual, I'll put the grid thing. I'm going to click on this button. I'll try to adjust this. Save a copy, let's make it pattern two. It's saved. Done. So I'm just draw a box and put the new one. Copy this over. Paste it here. Select delete. Now the pattern. I'll choose as the bigger one. Okay, there you go. You have the bigger pattern. So that's as simple as that. You just have to resize your base pattern to make it look a little bigger. Now that you know how to create patterns, uh, we need a very easy way to change colors because uh, 
here you cannot change the pattern of the base color you can just change the background like they've done here so you can go to this rectangle select it over here and then say any color you want so you cannot change the color of the base pattern here so what we're gonna do is we're gonna use Photoshop to do that task for us and it's pretty simple um, so that's gonna be and we'll learn it um, you know next week so until then Bye.